Hey guys, I love Colossians chapter four and I wanna encourage you to read it and reread it, it's beautiful. And in verse two of chapter four, Paul the apostle says, devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. Now there is a lesson right there that God wants us to pray. And let me tell you who modeled it the best, Jesus. And if Jesus had to pray about things, how much more do we, his followers? We're not above the master, you know, and he's taught us how to get things done. And he would often slip away and he would pray. And can let me just demystify prayer a little bit. For me, prayer is communication. Prayer is us talking with God and listening to God, going into his word, I love praying with my Bible in front of me. Um, I love what Philippians chapter 4 says, uh, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And there's that thanksgiving thing. Um, thankfulness, gratitude, appreciation is, those are really powerful uh, approach, life approaches. They're the opposite of grumbling, complaining, murmuring, and, and harboring dissatisfaction. Um, now, the Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be satisfied. <laughs> and another verse says, godliness is a means of great gain when it's accompanied with contentment. And, uh, I remember reading in a book, a Baptist minister said in his, his, one of his books, there's a contentment deficit disorder right now in modern times. Uh, the Bible says in Proverbs, the eyes of a man are never satisfied. So there's this thing we've got to be aware of as human beings that uh, can come, come on us and, and, and get us in this sort of dissatisfaction. But I want to get back to everything we do in prayer with thankfulness. Uh, in fact, it says this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. It says um, in verse 16, rejoice always. Now that's the opposite of grumbling, murmuring, and complaining. Pray without ceasing. Now that's, that's really devote yourselves to prayer. And you know, pray without ceasing. Well, but I work at a, a machine lathe at a, an assembly line, and, you know, the timing is such that I don't have time to get on my knees and pray and close my eyes. Well, you do have time to constantly, in all your ways, acknowledge him, Proverbs chapter 3. My wife was quoting at a ladies' breakfast recently a man named Brother Lawrence. He was uh, in a an environment like a, a kind of a, 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 a gathering place for priests. And the, the, he was like relegated to the kitchen duty. And they all got to spend all this time in the chapel doing spiritual things, reading their Bibles, kneeling and praying and so forth. He had to go in the kitchen and prepare meals for all those pious guys. But he still wanted to have, he was, he was in that role. He was pursuing that ministry because he had a heart after God. And he got a revelation that he could practice the presence of God as his lifestyle. Not like, let's practice it, let's do it, is really what he was saying. We don't cheapen it by practice. Like, sometimes I'll practice. No, he, he was like, I want to pray without ceasing. So he was in there peeling potatoes over the, in the kitchen basin and communing with God. Uh, I was in a Welsh bookstore, Northern Wales, back in the 1970s, and I found a four-volume, printed in 1795, just a few years after John Wesley's death. Beautiful um, journals that they had printed from his, his writings of his, of his life. And I, I started to study about the founder of Methodism, John Wesley. 
he, he, they said rode a quarter of a million miles on horseback and preached the gospel all over uh, England and Britain and then even the colonies in America. And his mother, uh, I think her name was Susanna. I think they had 12 kids or something. And at a certain point in the day, she, you know, in the outfits of the, of the 1700s, she, she had many layers of skirts, you know, highly modest people, you know, buttoned up to the neck, out to the wrists and down low below the, you know, just above the ankles. She would take the outer layer of her, her like an apron or whatever, and at a certain point in the day, she would pull it up over her head wherever she was in the house. And all the children were trained to realize that's mom's quiet time with the Lord. <laughs> and they would, they would, they were, they were aware that, that that was time to be quiet and not cause any mischief. And she she'd cover her head and she'd pray. <laughs> and I thought, wow. You know, I read that when I was young and you know, I worked, I worked as a clerk in a store and I had just these little breaks and then I had a small lunch break, you know, and it was all, you know, I was on my feet all day. So I would go into the break room and I would get in a, in a place, close the door. I'd read my little New Testament and I'd, you know, I would just close off and I would spend time praying. And I, I, I want to say we, we should get away and pray. Uh, we should pray on the go. I pray a lot while I'm driving. <laughs> I pray about my driving. I pray about other people's driving. But I also pray about the issues, you know. Um, I guess he would have done it, John Wesley, while he was on his horseback uh, in between one thing and the other. Uh, she prayed as a mom with multiple kids, you know. And it's, um, it, it's, it's a thing we can do. Devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert, in it, not just sort of droning along, but really being intentional about it and all with an attitude of thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus, that you hear and you answer my prayers. Thank you, Jesus, that you actually let me come to you with all my flaws and faults or even with my performance orientation where I think I'm exceptional today. And, and you just see me uh, in the high times of the hard times through your love and through the understanding that I've received what Jesus did on the cross. And that's the basis that I could stand by, not my performance or the lack thereof. So devote yourselves to prayer. is isn't like, oh, I got to pray because I'm a Christian. We get to pray because we're Christians and our prayers make a huge difference. And I'll finish with the famous Mark eleven twenty four: All things for which you and I and we pray about, believing we receive them, we have them. So I believe I receive when I pray to the Father in the name of Jesus, whether it's in the middle of a busy day, whether I get private time, whether I'm in my car, I devote, we devote, let's stay devoted to prayer. God bless you.